Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Good morning. We were looking at a ducted system where we had a premixed flame at a given location and then we uh, solve for the stability of the problem. So uh, in this case we had a flame here and we had a wave system on the left side and another wave system on the right side and we actually tried to set up the acoustic propagation equations on this side and also on this side which is our classical solutions and when he, we had a boundary condition which is uh, closed here and this was opened here. Now and, and we solved for the eigenvalues and we looked at the sign of the eigenvalues. Uh, we had a eigenvalues had a real part and the imaginary part and we showed that the imaginary part shows the growth rate or the decay rate and we could solve for that and we could find out under what conditions you would have growth, under what conditions we had uh, decay and all this assumed a simple n tau model and uh, of course we plug in values of n at the moment but in reality n and in, in, in reality the n and tau will come from some physical modeling based on the uh, fluid mechanics and combustion principles which we did not account for but assuming that you know that then we can actually do this modeling. Now having done this uh, come this far I will give you a homework problem on active control. So uh, a, a very simple uh, problem. So what we wish to do is to uh, replace one of the boundaries. So in this case it is easiest to replace the, the closed boundary with like a loudspeaker. So let us say we We keep a loudspeaker here. And we make it vibrate in some manner which is convenient to us or which is such that uh, it will make the system stable. So uh, how, how do we do, do this that is the question. So uh, if you if you look at our calculations we had solved for the imaginary part of eigenvalue and we had a um, Suppose we had a imaginary part which is giving a positive growth rate then we have to uh, make this system such that this loudspeaker will input something and therefore that would make the imaginary part change the sign, flip the sign and a growth rate will come to a decay rate. So that is the idea. Now in the, in the limit of things if there was no flame and if you put in a loudspeaker the oscillations will grow right. So if, if you do not have a flame and if you have a duct it is a neutrally stable system there is no driving no damping. So you put a loudspeaker it's, it can grow but uh, on the contrary if you put the loudspeaker and if you play around with the delays then it is possible to make the system stable and that is what we are going to work on. So uh, a uh, yeah. delay yeah. is when the sound is released. If you release at some time and sometime later it will yeah. have different effects. Yeah or, or the, the phase. I mean, phase. Yeah I mean price going up or coming down or in many flats. So you can adjust the but phase. How do we know a priori when Yeah that is what the homework is about so you can. <laughs> uh, so uh, the uh, so this is like a very simple way of having a active control. So what we mean by changing the sign of the imaginary part of eigenvalue there is a formal name for this anybody know this pole placement pole placement control so you have poles and you push it to the other side so it's called formally in control theory it's called pole placement control uh, i'm no expert in control theory and this uh, pole placement is the most in um, um, rudimentary form of control in uh, practice there are very advanced controls such as adaptive control, LQG control and, and, and so on and so forth but we, will, we can still in the classroom we can do simple small things and we try to illustrate things. So there are four key elements, one is the uh, microphone which will sense because 
if you have to do some kind of active control, you have to know what is going on. To control anything, if it is a feedback control, that means uh, it is like if you are studying well, I need to, I do not need to do something. But if your grades are going down, then I have to uh, teach better or, or yell at you more loudly or something like that. So, it depends on your performance, what my intervention should be. If everything is fine, then maybe it is better to stand back and watch everything. So, it is the same way you have to put the microphone. For example, if everything is stable and then you turn on the loudspeaker and then the sound will come up, right. We do not want that. So, we have to know what is happening. So, we definitely need a microphone. So, this is and uh, we need a delay generator as uh, Rajesh pointed out, we need to be able to adjust the time at which the sound comes in and, uh, and, and so on uh, or the phase of the sound. It is not like we are not having pulses, we are having continuous sound waves. So, it is more like adjusting the phase and we need a amplifier, audio amplifier. And four, we need an actuator. So, uh, actuator would mean uh, something will which will actuate and make sound. So, in this case, in the screwed example, I was saying we can use a loudspeaker. Yes, and we. Yeah. The problem is, I originally had a problem where I had a closed end here, and I was having let us say instability under some conditions. We, we showed for when the instability can come for fundamental mode and when it can come for third mode. So, I have an unstable system. Now, I want to make it stable actively. Actively means I interfere with it, meddle with it. Passively would mean, how would I do it passively first? Maybe that is a good question to ask. Yeah, have some, have some dampers. Or uh, on another thing would to do would be like where there is a pressure maxima put a hole and then so atmosphere tries to bring the pressure there to the atmosphere, but you want to maxima there is a conflict or yeah I put a uh, put a damping mechanism I think uh, or maybe yeah I, th I think those are the uh, or, or move the flame location that would be another possibility I mean so you are not uh, so that is passive control you you do something you are not interfering see everything is active you have to act to move it or to put a damper, but we are not acting in the time scale of oscillations. But uh, active control would mean that uh, you have oscillations of the order of let us say if you have 100 hertz oscillations the period is 10 millisecond and within the period we are meddling with it as it is uh, going on actively messing around with things. So, that is uh, more like it. So, uh, so I want to uh, actively mess around and the any elementary control things would say that we need a a plant right that is the if I speak the control jargon as uh, so a plant is our uh, plant does not mean some big uh, cement factory or something it just is the uh, device which you are trying to control which is our thermoacoustic system. We need a sensor, sensor is to find out what is going on if you do something without knowing what is going on I think then you are doing wrong things. For example, you all came late the two possibilities one is you all slept or maybe the previous professor left you late. So, if I uh, uh, assuming that you are let us say you are studious students and the previous class you were aggressively taking notes and listening to everything pro the professor are saying and you come here and I start yelling at you how dare you sleep till 9 o'clock uh, then actually you will be very upset and, uh, and I am really spoiling whatever motivation you have. But on the other hand if you are actually sleeping and if I assume that you are really working hard and all that and then I say okay, wonderful how wonderful guys you are that is also bad because then I am. Um, 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 appreciating your uh, sloppy behavior. So, I have to sense what is going on. So, without sensing any intervention would be I think it is like you go to sometimes you go to hospital and, and I want to tell the doctor the problems, but if, even as I have spoken about 15 percent of the problems they are writing prescriptions. I mean you must have had this experience they do not want to listen to you I mean they know everything about you uh, they are not sensing. So, we have to have accurate sensing to be able to intervene right that is the correct thing and, and, and then of course, our model should be right, we need a model and then in the model we put a controller and or in a if it is a hardware you put a actual uh, uh, speaker and so on. So, we need a, a controller and the controller strictly means the algorithm which controls. 
so you 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 uh, you have a you get a equations you work out in this case because we are doing the problem on the board and then you say okay we have to have the uh, actuator vibrate at this phase delay and so on so that that, that will be called controller controller doesn't really physically mean some box which controls but it's that control action which or the control uh, which is uh, what is uh, generally referred to as controller and then there's the actuator so actuator is like in my case the previous example of uh, you coming late and i am screaming at you the actuator is my uh, vocal cords and and and, and so on so that's the actuator uh, so you have to have a sensor actuator and a plant and and that's basically it and you should actuate uh, correctly so if you for example you you came late today but tomorrow you come on time but instead of yelling today if i yell at you tomorrow you will think that okay you i came in time and this guy is yelling at me so there is something wrong and then you will lose motivation whereas uh, if i yell at you maybe oh i am slackening so i should work hard so the timing is very important uh, for example everybody goes up and down so when you are um, messing up i should get aggressively uh, yelling at you and when you are doing well i should say oh wonderful keep it up and and and, and so on so that that's the modern management strategy so it's the same kind of thing uh, and, and the timing is quite important because if you uh, I'll give another example i go to the park with my daughter uh, i used to go now she's a little grown up that she doesn't want me to come with her anymore so uh, she's swinging and uh, i uh, sometimes she asks me to push and i have to push at the right time if i i can also push at the wrong time and i'm sometimes wanting to go away and i push at the wrong time and the swing will come to stop but the same pushing action at uh, another time within the cycle will actually keep the swing going even further so everything uh, everything is about timing i think in life also uh, uh, so so we have uh, so microphone is sensor you can use a condenser microphone or a piezo electric actuator any such thing uh, so this delay generator and amplifier together will make the controller with and it should do whatever we are asking it to do and this is the uh, actuator which is the in this example which is the uh, loudspeaker we can also have a piston oscillating and in uh, of course in a combustor it would be very awkward to put a loudspeaker in a combustion system first thing the sound levels are very high that loudspeakers cannot take it and and the se uh, second thing is loudspeakers don't have the author i mean it, it doesn't produce that much sound the level that is required to stop these oscillations because they are very loud so perhaps it's better to have like i mentioned earlier secondary fuel injection you inject fuel such that the heat release coming out of that is out of phase with the pressure and then that creates acoustic damping yes anviksha you had a question so in terms of uh, the uh, yeah so this is a uh, very uh, the question is in terms of active or passive control which is a lesser costly option uh, of course costlier option and uh, not costly option depend on what are the consequences so it's a very deep question what you are asking so uh, if you were to put an actuator first of all you have to make a control law and and you have to do some analysis then you have to put the hardware mount the hardware it should be tested and it should work for so long if it's a combustor it should work for like several years without uh, this power they are they're sitting in a power plant which makes power let's say or, or in an aeroplane and it should work for several years without having to uh do anything at all and so it should be very reliable and any time you ensure reliability it's expensive and so on uh, uh so um, in fact actually in to look at the simple case of land based gas turbine engines uh, i think there have been some cases where they installed the active controller but as of now to my knowledge it it doesn't exist because reliability is a issue and to ensure reliability is very expensive and um, and i think the engineers and the managers would go for reliability simplicity and 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 so on now if you speak to a control guy he will say that yeah i mean passive control is not effective it will it will be effective only for one kind of thing at one kind of frequency and so on so they would advocate active control but uh, so active control is very good but can you ensure 100% or 100.00 percentage reliability and marginal economic cost only so if you can and if it is necessary for example you know that uh, we are flying unstable aircraft without any problem but you wouldn't put that kind of uh, uh, so you want to make the aircraft unstable because you want to be able to control it very well so that why do you want to control it very well because you want to out maneuver the enemy so it is a circumstance everything is in the context so there it is a pressing need to uh, 
outdo the other guy okay and, and then you have to have a proper control loss and, and so the system should be well understood and it should be very reliably be controlled. Uh, so, if uh, that is not possible or in a, a commercial airplane you have autopilot and, and, and so on. So, there the system is understood well enough and it is repeatably performing without any problem and the cost does not seem to be going up and so on. Uh, so, uh, I mean the managers have uh, confidence in it. Uh, so, if you uh, if you have that then so, so it, it depends on cost means if, if you can get it to work somewhat like 50 percent okay then cost may not be what, what much. If you can make it to work 80 percent cost will go up, but if it is 90 percent reliability it should work 90 percent of the time it will even go up. If it works should work 99 percent of the time it will even go up, it will work 100 percent of the time then the price will be very very high. So, the, then the passive control of course, it also has its price because you put into surplus um, 50 hertz oscillations it would not do anything with the 200 hertz oscillations and it would not do anything with the 5000 hertz oscillation. Then you have to put something else in and then it is also psychological because I mean whether you uh, if you told uh, the passengers that the airplane may be <coughs> running at fly by wire or something then they may not get into the airplane. It, so, I think the managers think that it would not be reliable because if the thing shuts down uh, if, if you are uh, and, and then you have to replace it takes uh, like several hours to work and then that creates lot of problem because the power stations are op operating at capacity and then you have to shut it down for several hours and, and they do not want to get into this. So, as of now uh, it seems like active control is perce uh, perceived as a expensive option and uh, reliable, but reliability again how much reliable. So, if I if you would come to class uh, reliably that means, whether you are coming exactly at 900 or some people come at uh, 905 and some come at 908, some other people come at 859. And of course, you, you think about the effort they are putting the, the fellow who is coming at 859 always or 858, uh, they are actually concerned right from the morning as soon as they get up they think okay I should be in here in time. So, they are paying a price for their reliability whereas, okay oh there is a class now I have to just go there. So, it, by the time you come here it is 908. So, you are not having to pay the price in terms of paying attention to this effort to come here in time. So, anything involves um, effort. Uh, now, so, th this is on, on, on basic thing, but even beyond that the other question is like is the system really well understood Have, and, and then again anyone who make a theory will say that this theory is wonderful and everything is understood and everybody else may not believe in believe in it. A and can you actually reliably uh, implement it? So, I uh, I have spoken to many engineers in, uh, running these things. So, thermocracy instabilities are really a problem in solid rocket motor, but it is just not amenable to active control because I mean a motor <coughs> fires for 8 seconds and hits the target or something like that I mean you and there is no possibility to put any active control there. Liquid rockets perhaps, but it is not done yet and uh, uh, there, there may be a possibility, but it is all passive. In uh, land based gas turbine they have done it some of the big companies, but uh, it is all taken out I think it is not there anymore. And uh, so, I think in aeroplane engines it could be maybe 20 some years later it may come in because uh, I think if it comes it will come first in aeroplane engines because uh, see you push the combustor performance beyond some limit I mean uh, there is an envelope is uh, pushed by is, is created by various factors one of the factors is the uh, instability. So, if you push too much into it uh, uh, that is if you increase the loading too much it may go unstable. So, there is a limitation which is provided by this and then if you can overcome that and give the pilot a extra advantage then I think uh, people will go for it, but you have to prove that we will bring the aeroplane and the pilot back safely because you spend billions on both this uh, the person and the machine. So, it is a very complex factor driven by technology, theory, practice and economics uh, and so on that the land based people say that the actuators are just not reliable enough that they cannot work several years without having to uh, be able to. Uh, uh, to be able to replace it and they just do not trust it. So, these are the conditions now, but suddenly it can change, but it is very hard to uh, predict long term technology uh, changes in the short term only we can say, uh, but these are some of the issues. So, there is no easy answer for this and the answer depends on who gives the answer also. Okay. Any, any supplementary questions? No. Okay. So, uh, so, we will uh, draw a block diagram for the controller with this components. So, there is the 
combustor which in the control jargon would be the plant or something like that. So, so you sense the pressure fluctuations let us say so So we have so let us say we sense P at A comma T. Then we have a time delay generator and amplifier, and we will have a transfer function for it. And this feeds into a actuator. Which will impose velocity fluctuation somewhere. In this case, we can keep the loudspeaker wherever you want. In this case, I have just kept it at n. So, impose velocity fluctuation. So, we have a combustor, we sense the pressure in the combustor somewhere. So, let us say around the flame with a microphone and then we look at the signal and delay the signal and also amplify it adequately and what is adequate we will see and, and then uh, we have to have a relationship for the uh, uh, how much you amplify and how much you uh, phase shift and then you get the signal and uh, force the actuator which will impose some velocity fluctuations because any loudspeaker will actually here impose a velocity fluctuations but as I told you there can be other kind of uh, actuators also and then you uh, feed it back to the combustor. Here in this case we do it through the uh, uh, end, uh, the micro uh, loudspeaker at the end. Okay. So, this is the uh, what is called the block diagram, is this clear. <coughs> so, if I uh, go back here. So, I locate my microphone somewhere here and then I have to have a time delay and then you have to have a amplifier and this is our actuator which is the loudspeaker. So, this is the system. So, we will proceed to make a simple mathematical model that is our mission. So, uh, we need to find a relationship between the velocity here and the pressure that we sense here because we are sensing this pressure and inputting a velocity based on that by uh, some kind of delay and some kind of amplification. So, those things can be, so we, we define a control transfer function delta which is a which is time varying velocity created by the speaker divided by time varying <coughs> pressure that is sensed by your sensor. Of course, you have to be careful to put the microphone at a place where you can actually measure pressure because if you put it at a pressure minimum, a pressure node, then you may not sense anything. Right. I mean you have standing wave and some places your large amplitude, some other places your small amplitude. So, you have to locate the sensor wisely okay yeah you had a question yes you wanted an example for the active control 
Okay, that's what I'm doing. Yeah, this is the example. I mean, you uh, like anti sound. You you have uh, uh, like so. I have sound in the system, and now I put a loudspeaker in there and try to shut down the sound. So this is active control. I, I mean, I didn't quite understand. The loudspeaker is an example. Loudspeaker is example of not of active control. It's the example of an actuator. But you are wanting. You can state your question. Yeah, I don't. I mean, as an example, I can't even know the reason. As an example, I can't even know the reason. Yeah. So this is like a time delay based controller. So this, the whole system together is active control. Okay. So this is delta and uh, it is a complex quantity. So So, the crux of the matter is the boundary condition at x equal to 0 is now different. Okay. So, this uh, boundary condition is not closed in anymore, it is a relationship between the it is some other velocity. Okay. So, we will look at b c at x equal to 0. So, u of 0 comma t equal to minus 1 over rho 1 c 1 a e power minus i k 1 a minus b e power i k 1 a times e power i omega t and uh, p we have to remember that uh, the sensor and actuator need not be at the same location. So you can choose to keep your sensor wherever you want. You can choose choose to keep the actuator wherever you want. Uh, that's your choice. Okay. So here I am deliberately choosing a location which is different. P a comma t. What is P a comma t? It's a plus b times e power i omega t. So and I have a relationship between delta. So P one delta is u one, right? So that's the relationship that I should uh, calculate. So uh, P1 delta would be delta times e power i omega t times a plus b equal to minus 1 over rho 1 c1 times rho 1 c1. So this is to make sure that delta is non dimensional so the rho 1 c1 factor will go away times a e power minus i k 1 a minus b e power plus i a on a times e power i omega t which you can cancel and this will also go. So, you will get a e power minus i k 1 a minus b e power i k 1 a equal to minus delta into a plus b. So, you will have a times e power minus i k on a plus delta plus b times delta minus e power plus i k on a equal to 0. So, this is the new relation. So, we had 4 equations and there was an equation 1 there uh, which was a e power minus i k on a plus uh, minus b e power plus i k on a equal to 0. We will have to replace that with this condition. So, this is the new boundary condition at x equal to 0. So, if you assemble the new matrix you will get I will just write the answer.
So, we have to uh, th this is the four equations we have three of them are same only the one corresponding to the boundary condition at x equal to 0 where I replace the hard end by the actuator is changed and now uh, uh, you have to uh, so this will be like this matrix times a b c d will be 0. So, determinant of the matrix which is what I have written here should be 0 and that will give a equation which relates the Eigen values. Now, we want the Eigen values such that your growth rate is negative. So, now so you will get a relation a dispersion relation for the Eigen value just like you had uh, derived on earlier when this controller was not there right. I mean earlier this delta was 0 and then we could derive a relation right everyone has very blank faces. Can you see your notebook and check if such a relation was indeed derived. Do you see it? You, you see this matrix and all that? No? Okay. Yeah, okay. At least the PG students look like they have seen it. Uh, so, uh, uh, so, similarly, we can get a relationship for the uh, and now it will involve delta and n. Of course, n is given, tau is given. Uh, so, you will have to tweak delta such that imaginary part of omega gives dq rate not growth rate. So, that is the idea. So, I leave it to you to do it as homework you can work out controlling the first mode and the third mode and we can discuss the results some two classes later or something Next Wednesday we can discuss the results. But please do it otherwise all the discussions will be uh, pointless actually. Okay. Sir, yeah. I I do not know. So, you have to work it out. <coughs> so, what you would do is uh, you can actually solve for a, b and c in, in terms of d or something like that and then you plot the standing wave and uh, uh, and you have the jump conditions and all that. So, you, you plot the Eigen function and let me know what the answer is maybe on Wednesday you can show me. So, this is a very important question. Uh, so, if, if you are if your n is very small and your delta is also equally small you would not be changing that, but if your n and delta are big you may actually be turning that changing that. You can also work out this question without the flame which is probably what you are interested in uh, will uh, if you put a driver will it change the standing wave. I think it depends on how much you drive. So, uh, can you volunteer to work the solution out and show this if you have need help you can see me I will explain to you how to do that. Okay. It's a very uh, brilliant question. Thank you. Any other questions? So, is it clear what the homework is? Okay, it's clear to Vishnu. Cool. It's peaceful, right? Yeah. Okay. So, it'll take some time, perhaps, to figure out which is which. But yeah. So, please do this and come back. Then we'll discuss. So, I will take a, uh, a momentary break from this, but we can discuss this on Wednesday. So, this. Uh, n tau model that can also be uh, like you are relating the velocity uh, and the heat release rate. So, a control person would say that there is a transfer function between heat release rate and velocity. So, uh, I mean we call it n tau model, but that is what basically it is. Now, these are all this analysis was done in frequency domain right not in the time domain we actually solve for modes and we are solving for one mode at a time. So, this would be called modal analysis right in, in frequency domain that is what we did. And we did. We did modal analysis. So, there is an alternate set of analysis in the time domain. So, the way things are set up in frequency domain it kind of forces you to do stability of modes and in, in time domain you are not constrained that way. So, you can solve for all the modes together and uh, <coughs> but essentially frequency domain analysis is much more simpler and easier to do than time domain analysis. So, which is why people prefer to do that, but when you go to time domain you can actually afford to do a, uh, a known model analysis. Uh, 
will this be of any use we will have to analyze and see. Now when you so all that our theory did we did basically linear stability analysis in the model, model framework. So we can get a frequency uh, the periodic component and a growth rate uh, that means the oscillations are growing indefinitely. But in reality uh, it will not nothing will grow indefinitely. I will give you example suppose you somehow uh, got a new job or something like that or you found a way to get new income. In the beginning the income will go I mean you are getting lot of money and you have not figured out ways to spend it. But soon you will know a new things to buy a iPod and I do not know what are the uh, iPad, iPhone and all these things will drain away the phone and in case you are a uh, humble fellow you do not spend all these things you do not need all these things. Your friends will find way to spend your money they will pile on on you or your family would uh, take the money and blow it. So eventually what happens it, it your, uh, your uh, growth this initial exponential growth it will take some time for your uh, family members or friends to figure out that your money. So at that time you will have this exponential growth your wife may not know that oh this fellow has so much money or your children may not know or your friends may not know. But after some time delayed tau everybody is going to or some people know in time delayed tau 1 who are close to you some other fellows will know after some time delayed tau 2 and now suddenly after some another time delayed tau 3 these people who are not close to you now will start becoming close to you in another time delta tau they will suddenly become very close and adding this tau 1 plus tau 2 plus tau 3 plus this delta tau they would start squeezing you or taking out the money. So eventually what happens to your exponential growth it will stop growing exponentially growth rate will come down eventually what happens you can have two possibilities one is you may saturate out and you may have okay earlier you are having uh, no money at all or uh, every time you had like 5 rupee 10 rupee kind of thing from that you have no 100 rupee or 1000 rupee or 10,000 or uh, billion like I heard that Amitabh Bachchan had 93 crore and still he was bankrupt I cannot imagine <laughs> how you can be bankrupt having 93 crores uh, but whereas I mean I never I do not even know how much a crore is and I feel very rich. So it is all uh, perception it, it all depends on what to non dimensionalize with like if you non dimensionalize with the amount of money you had yesterday you may look good. But if you non dimensionalize with uh, Amitabh Bachchan that was 93 crore now we are talking about 200,000 crore and thing, uh, 20,000 crore and all these things uh, which certain people have. Uh, so compared to that I mean uh, what is 1 lakh or 1,000 or 10,000 nothing. So it depends on uh, what you non dimensionalize with you, you see that for example you are u prime you can non dimensionalize with u bar it will look very good you non dimensionalize with c it look very small. So it depends on what you non dimensionalize with and there is a point behind uh, what to non dimensionalize with okay. So, uh, so we talked about this growth now there are two possibilities the so one is okay hopefully you will saturate out something somewhere other possibility is you can <laughs> go back after some time with the exponential decay and asymptotically become very poor. So this is like a transient growth both possibilities exist and this our linear theory would not predict because linear theory deals with linear things and these are non-linear effects. For example this friend who was not close to you so he was acquaintance now he saw that you have money and now all of a sudden he became a friend now linear theory will not account for it because it is a non-linear effect because if you have to your amount of money in your pocket or a bank has to grow beyond some threshold for that guy to get. Uh, 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 that guy to get interested in your money. So it is like let us say amount of money is m and he will active, be active only if m minus m threshold should be greater than 0. So such things are non-linear right I mean then so this is this function so there is some function which is acting on this kind of thing. Uh, so those are non-linearities and our linear theory would not predict any of this kind of stuff. So you can have uh, 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 these things plus uh, okay now let us say you are a quiet fellow you are a poor fellow nothing happened and you are having your day to day existence at a fixed point no money and somehow barely living without making much noise and suddenly you get a lottery bang. So that is like a suddenly some initial condition happened and everything changed and when you are rich then okay all this whole same mechanics you are suddenly have a lot of money 
you reach the high amplitude, then a lot of people are going to come and take the money out and eventually you can reach a, a stable place hopefully or can go to chaotic situation also. So, you can go to reach different attractors. Uh, so, <coughs> so, uh, so this would be called like triggering. So, in a combustion situation, so what I first mentioned about the saturation. So, we have a linear theory giving exponential growth, but this will stop being that and some kind of saturation of amplitudes happen, uh, possibly the oscillations may go to a limit cycle perhaps. Now, the other uh, thing is triggering instability. So, you have a system which is completely quiet and, uh, but suddenly it becomes unstable or I will give you another example. The first it was this, this kind of behavior was uh, noticed in rockets, solid rocket motors and uh, you have a same rocket motor, it will be fired 10 times, 20 times there will be no problem. But on 21st time let us say instability comes on and then 22nd to 38 maybe it will be quiet and then suddenly it may come on. So, it depends on the initial conditions, uh, uh, what is the specific circumstances that day uh, and, and some particular initial pulse was there somehow which made it go. So, this is called triggering instability. So, this was uh, discovered in the uh, with the uh, solid rocket motor and, uh, and uh, so this uh, things like triggering and saturation we can study in the time domain very easily in frequency domain it may not be all that simple to look at it. So, uh, these uh, uh, things um, see you, you, you probably know that uh, not those who are studying nonlinear dynamics they are uh, uh, I mean these things are described well in that. So, this triggering would be called subcritical transition to instability and uh, but this solid rocket people saw all these instabilities uh, this kind of instabilities uh, even before this language of nonlinear dynamics was well established which happened sometime in late 70s, 80s and so on. So, uh, they had their own terminology. So, I will try to connect them. Uh, so, uh, what a rocket person would say is that a, a system is stable to amplitudes of certain below some threshold value and above the some threshold value the system goes unstable. So, if you speak to nonlinear dynamics you will say that if you are within the basin of attraction of one particular attractor you will go towards that attractor, but you are if you are outside the basin of that, uh, uh, that, that particular attractor then it would not go there it will go to some other attractor. So, these are all same things, but uh, it is uh, describing the same phenomena in different language. So, uh, if you uh, we can actually use the dynamical system theory to our advantage. So, so we write the differential equation in this form f of chi where chi is the uh, state vectors. So, you have all the variables that you need to describe the system and, and you describe that. So, pressure at several different points, velocity at several different points, maybe the temperature at several different points, heat release at several different points. So, chi will be the uh, state vector. And f is a nonlinear function. Now, a linearized version of this can be so L is a linear operator. If you discretize it, you can get into a matrix. So, if you write in this form, we can use all the theories or the tools that are available in nonlinear dynamics and if you simplify it by linearizing to this system, then we can use the all the theory of linear algebra to our advantage and, and then study our instability with those things. So, the earlier framework was in the framework of acoustics, but we can now use this uh, framework of dynamical systems and, uh, and we can take advantage of those tools and see we can milk more things out of this analysis and we will see if we can calculate triggering and saturation. So, that is the idea. So, the question is what is chi? Uh, the chi is the state vector. 
So, what it is depends on your view. So, you can think of it only as acoustic pressure and velocity or uh, as uh, I think some of the discussions we had earlier, we can think of a combustor like a flame in an acoustic field as a two scale problem or a three scale problem where you have one scale for the acoustic field, another scale for the hydrodynamic zone and perhaps some other scale for the heat release zone and so on. So, in each zone you will have to write equations and then mask the inner solution with the outer solution and then all those variables together will uh, all, all the variables together will form this uh, state vector. Okay. So, uh, now this would be quite intricate and, and so on, but that is for real. So, if you are talking about the thermoacoustic engine, you will have the acoustic field, but there is also a complex hydrodynamics going on in the stack which you have to model. So, that will also enter this uh, uh, enters a state, ve uh, state vector. Now, if you are going to use a transfer function approach, what you would do is we will write uh, like n tau, you say q prime is going like n times velocity at t minus tau or pressure at t minus tau, but here we are actually solving everything in a couple manner in the time domain. And uh, so, what my objective here is to uh, do a simple time domain model. Simple means you should be able to write the full model, write all this uh, these functions by hand and even write the linearized matrix by hand and then we should be able to uh, uh, calculate this uh, 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 triggering and, and, and saturation and so on. So, we will make up a model problem. So, there is a difference between a model and a model problem. A model problem is a problem which you cook up which has it is based on physics, but you are constructing you are saying it is that way uh, or a toy problem again a uh, toy problem is not in any derogatory sense as some people would take it, but toy problem would mean that it will let you play with it. It is a toy you can play, but a real model may be so expensive to run that if the run takes 6 months to run, then you cannot play with it. A toy model would mean you hit enter and within a second you have all the results. So, I'll, uh, I will I will uh, make a toy model, construct a toy model or, or a model problem and uh, then we will learn to write things in. Uh, uh, in the way uh, the dynamical system people write and we will try to use tools from dynamical system theory and uh, we will use tools from uh, linear stability theory from the uh, uh, linear algebra and, and try to analyze uh, the system. And uh, so, this triggering would be called uh, subcritical Hopf bifurcation. So, just to explain what it is. Uh, so, if you vary some parameter let us say for example, if you have a flame and you send more fuel or something or so the more heating value more heat is released and let us say so more more heat release uh, by changing the equivalence ratio or fuel flow rate or something. And let us say I have a quiet condition and then the oscillations come about this way. So, this would be a what kind of bifurcation is super critical bifurcation, but I can also have a situation where everything stays quiet and then suddenly I jump up and then keep on doing like this. But when I want to come back, so here uh, I had uh, stable points all over the place and here there are solutions, but they are unstable. So, as soon as I come here I jump up here and continue on and when I come back, I if I come back here it would not come back, I will have to come back much more and then only it will drop back here and, and go this way. So, the hysteresis would be I come this way, jump up, go, but then I have to come back all the way here and only then I can go up. So, there will be a hysteresis, I do not know if the spelling is right. So, so this would be an example of a Sub, subcritical Hopf bifurcation, where you go this way and you can jump up, but to uh, come back you will have to come back all the way. So, we will we will calculate these things and study triggering in the modern dynamic system framework that is the idea. So, next class we will make a uh, uh, we will write the equation time domain make a toy model and, and so on, but please do that homework. So, that next week we can discuss when this is over about the active control. Thank you.